World Denver Talks today with Ambassador Thomas R. Pickering. Ambassador Pickering was a former Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs and served as U.S. Ambassador to Russia, Israel, Jordan, and the United Nations. He is one of America's most experienced and respected top diplomats. It's a special honor to welcome you to World Denver Talks, Ambassador. Thank you. I'm happy to be with you. Ambassador, as we get started here today, I wonder if you could define the Iran Project for us. The Iran Project is a group of a few individuals who have had uh, long experience in the U.S. government and in related issues who got together uh, right after the turn of the century and thought that there was a, an important opportunity uh, to bring the U.S. and Iran together, uh, perhaps in negotiations, to deal with the major problems between them. And we were lucky enough to begin to establish a track to dialogue an unofficial dialogue between individuals in both countries to talk about a wide range of issues. And we continued that for nine years. Uh, and that dialogue produced all kinds of useful ideas, contacts, and relationships. When the dialogue ended, we nevertheless continued uh, with many Iranians the opportunity to chat and to understand what their views were. We wrote articles in uh, magazines and op-eds we wrote several monographs, one on the costs and benefits of the use of military force, one on the costs and benefits of sanctions in the U.S.-Iran equation, and another on the opportunities for negotiation. And we're taking another look on how and in what way sanctions might be raised in the course of negotiation. And we're taking a look at Iran, the United States, and the wider Middle East. So we continue to provide our best advice uh, we talked to the American government uh, before and after all of our meetings. Uh, we talk to them about ideas that are on our minds. We go and see senators and members of the House on Iranian issues, and they seem to welcome us. And so we, in effect, have taken on uh, a broader uh, focus on how and in what way we could contribute uh, to beginning to open up uh, the relationship with Iran which has been nearly frozen in a condition of uh, mistrust and misunderstanding for over 33 years. Detente between the U.S. and Iran will be the biggest geopolitical story of 2014, according to some pundits, um, although it's being opposed strongly by Saudi Arabia and Israel. Some observers liken this to when the U.S. extended a hand of friendship to China and two important U.S. allies panicked. Those, of course, were Japan and Taiwan. Both Japan and Taiwan have seen that their fears were unwarranted. Will Saudi Arabia and Israel follow the same path? I suspect that they will. There are a lot of questions that remain open as there were with China. One of those is, of course, what will be the course of the negotiations uh, between the permanent five members of the Security Council, Germany, on one side and Iran on the other side. Uh, will the Senate, uh, with the action now pending on sanctions and the House, uh, together take steps which will in effect block the negotiations uh, because the bills clearly would violate the commitment the U.S. has undertaken to Iran on no new sanctions while the negotiations are proceeding. Uh, those are critical questions and they're hard to answer right now. My hope is that it will see a change because the recent elections in Iran brought to power President Rouhani, who has, with seemingly the backing of a large majority of Iranians, and even the supreme leader of Iran, who was always skeptical about moving in the direction of the United States, uh, move in, an op in a direction in which, in his political campaign, he promised to go. And we, we treat that as serious. And we will, will we put together the kind of answer uh, that would bring that kind of uh, uh, rapprochement closer together? And the answer is partly in uh, by a nuclear agreement reached in November, which does a number of very important things, and by an agreement reached yesterday on how to implement that nuclear agreement, and by the fact that the United States has committed itself to begin right after the 20th of January 
to start on a new comprehensive nuclear agreement with Iran, seemingly to nail down for a long-term period a set of relationships that both sides could live with, which will do its utmost uh, to keep Iran away uh, from moving toward a nuclear weapon. Um, you wrote y yesterday in the Denver Post about the dangers of the Senate bill, I think it's 1881, um, which if passed would increase sanctions against Iran. At the same time, the president is trying to, uh, to reach a, an agreement with Iran. What are the sponsors trying to achieve and why would they introduce such a bill now when diplomacy seems to be yielding results? The sponsors say that sanctions brought Iran to the table to negotiate. More sanctions could produce a result with having, without having to negotiate at all. And I think that's a vast overreading of the situation. It was particularly true that one of the commitments the United States made in this first agreement uh, was that it would introduce no new sanctions while the process was continuing. The process is continuing. The agreement reached uh, on the 11th of January makes it clear uh, that there are no roadblocks to the opening of the process. And indeed, the International Atomic Energy Agency has reported as early as August that Iran was taking a number of steps uh, already ahead of any agreement at all, which now are clearly within the context of that agreement, steps to stop its uh, nuclear program, which is helpful news because it indicates a sign of good intent on the part of Iran, something that the Senate and others very much distrust. What is our next step now that we've reached the, the basic agreement and the implementation agreement? What is our next step and what role do our allies play in the next step? Our allies, of course, will be with us firmly in the next step. The next step is to use the next six months to see if we can negotiate a comprehensive agreement, which will take the gains that have been made in the first agreement, which were very substantial and very important, including real limitations uh, on the amount of uh, fissile material that Iran will produce and the size of the stockpile, as well as cutting back on some material enriched to a higher level, which presented the most serious danger of the possibility of a rapid breakout toward a nuclear weapon. It will take seriously uh, the decision by the American intelligence community that Iran has not yet decided to make a nuclear weapon and seek to put in place restrictions on a peaceful program that Iran has that will take it as far away from a rapid breakout as possible and to do so with a very significant number of new monitoring and verification arrangements so that the world is given assurances that President Reagan's old model, trust but verify, is being applied to and carried out to this particular effort. I think finally, it will require the United States to give up on some of the sanctions that it has put on Iran, particularly those that have been put on uh, as a result of U.S. objections uh, to Iran's nuclear program. Do you really expect Iran to comply with this agreement? Do you, do, you, do you think they will? I think there's good reason to believe they will. I think there is good reason to believe that despite opposition by hardliners in Iran, Iran has already begun, even before it is required to, to comply with parts of this agreement. Uh, but of course, it is always important and a central part of these agreements to have a significant amount of international inspection backed up by our own domestic intelligence to assure ourselves that there are no games being played. What would you say ordinary Iranians want to see out of this agreement in the short run? And uh, do, you, do you feel they're likely to actually experience those benefits? Ordinary Iranians, I think, is very clear. They voted for a situation in which Iran would come back into the world community, end its isolation, uh, see openings for trade and commerce, uh, relieve the pressure of sanctions on the Iranian public. And I believe the Iranian public will want to see return. It is true that we got, in my view, a much better deal on the first agreement. Uh, we got more and gave less than I thought we would have to on sanctions relief. Mm -hmm. But Iran is satisfied that the sanctions relief they got is the beginning of change and the beginning of their promise to the voters of Iran that if they were elected, 
uh, they would take these steps and begin to show some results. We need to be careful, obviously, that we don't take steps that undermine the agreement on either side. In our Senate, uh, by the imposition of sanctions uh, when we're not supposed to because we've agreed not to, and in Iran, uh, by in effect having too little return uh, at too long a period of time in response to what appears to be now so far an Iranian willingness to meet our major demands.